Hi everyone, and welcome to Conversations for Peace, Day 6. I'm Marcy Newman, your Heart Shift Coach, and I'm here to talk about the fact that we have 15 days between now and September 21st, which is the International Day of Peace. I've started these conversations because I noticed within myself when I thought about the 21st, I recognized that I could feel a contraction of my energy, almost like I was bracing myself. Now, contraction is typically something that happens when we are trying to protect ourselves. And yet here was this concept of a day of peace and I was feeling a sense of anxiety, perhaps even outwardly some stress associated with it because I was wondering to myself, how am I going to get there? How am I going to get from where I am today to being fully able to celebrate the day of peace on the 21st? And so every day I've been coming to you and talking about the different ways to cultivate more of this energy within you just as I'm cultivating more of it within me. Every single moment, we are given a choice as to which energies to feed. Those energies that we choose determine our entire experience in life. If we are choosing energies that are in discord. In other words, they are actually at war between themselves and between our true nature. We are at war within ourselves. It is the only source of discord on the outside. It must be beginning on the inside. Energy because we are energy beings, is constantly being projected out from us. So we're seeing a tremendous amount of discord. We're seeing violence and pain and suffering. And there are those who would tell you that there are many reasons for this. But the truth is, is that there is only one reason. And that is that whenever we are out of alignment with our true nature, that energy of discord takes many different forms. And right now, it seems to be at a crescendo. There are those who think that we must stop this by forcing it to stop. That's not the way energy works. Energy is constantly seeking out other energy just like itself. If we are yearning for peace within us, it is we who have to cultivate more peace in order for it to be projected out and to create the experiences that our heart is yearning for. Yesterday, I spoke about the difference between judgment and discernment. It's something that perhaps you hadn't even thought of before. But every time that we're in judgment, it's the energy of separation that creates that. And we are in that moment of judgment, believing that we know what's better for every person, every circumstance, every situation when in fact, there is only one way for us to know what is best, and that is what is best for us. Of course, we do not want to see any more of the pain and suffering that's going on. And yet, here we are allowing ourselves to be to be completely consumed by that pain and suffering if that's the energy that we are feeding. So what discernment does is rather than having us pointing fingers outwards of blame and shame and guilt, what we are doing now is saying, is this good for me? Is this for my highest good? 
does this bring me peace or does this bring me to discord? It is monumental at times to try to navigate through the onslaught of that energy that would create such discord that there is this crescendo effect, seeing it physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, and of course, separating all of those parts of a being from their spirit, which is pure of heart. So over and over and over again, we come back to these same concepts. If there is discord on the outside, it is because there is discord on the inside. It is the only place where we can shift the energy. Of course, as you know, I'm the heart shift coach and the processes that I teach bring all of these energies back into the heart, which is the only place that is powerful enough to transmute these energies. And more on that a little bit later. But right now, I want you just to focus in on the fact that you have choice and how essential it is that you cultivate your own ability to simply observe yourself. I spoke about this very early on and how essential this information is because here's the bottom line. Think about what happens to you when you are at odds with yourself. Are you flexible or inflexible? In most cases you become quite inflexible. You dig your heels down and you decide you're not going to budge. And yet the only way to find relief is to budge, is to shift, is to even shift your perspective like 10%. So when we're in this place of being at war within ourselves, we become inflexible our energy field contracts and we can no longer get what we need, the source of life itself. We are disconnected from it. As we are inflexible, what happens is that we are no longer resilient. We cannot carry what we need forward in order to deliver us from one place to the other. Flexibility and resiliency is what is necessary to get through these difficult times. And all of these energies are associated with peace. Peace is what I call a complete energy. So it's an associate, right, of many other energies. However, unto itself, it is complete. When you are at peace, you are in alignment with your true self. What that means is that you will have access to having faith, trust, compassion, empathy, kindness, generosity, joy, creativity, abundance, prosperity, you will have access to those energies that have then the capacity to create what you really want to experience in your life. And so my words to you today are again, bring yourself back over and over and over again to the possibility that you have a different choice than to feed the energy that you are seeing outside of you at this time. As you bring yourself in, reconnecting again and again with your true self, 
you will once again start to feel strong. You will feel less fear. You will feel confident in your ability to make decisions. You will feel that you are safe. And of course, you will have access to all the parts of you that provide that strength, that confidence, and the clarity that you're seeking. Every day I've been sharing this pledge for peace and I'm sharing it with you again today. Each day the words may vary just a little bit depending on what my heart is expressing. This pledge, by the way, um, is yours if you'd like it. It's um, on my website, which is heartshiftcoach.com. And in addition, there is a guide there for seven ways for you to cultivate peace in your own life. And I hope that you will take advantage of those two tools that I've created for you. And then we can say this pledge together every single day. So here's my pledge to you. I pledge to extend peace into my circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart. I am doing everything that I can to cultivate that. I also am cultivating my clear intentions I am taking personal responsibility for my thoughts, for my reactions, how I feel, and then my responses. I am really focusing on taking compassionate action with everything that I possibly can. And I am taking this peace pledge here today, right here and right now, passing it from my heart directly to yours. Peace that's coming in, peace that's being extended to you, peace that comes back to me again. Take some time. Discern what is best for you, what makes you feel best. Let go of whatever is outside of that. Stay focused and stay connected. We are in this together and together we'll see it through to the other side. Peace in and peace out.